Hi everybody, my name is Rhys Barber. I'm the audiologist here at Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching another subscriber questions answer video today. This is the video where we answer the most popular questions from the week before. So if you do have any questions you'd like an answer to, pop them into the comment section below. The first question we have today comes from Beth Clementson. Um, Beth's asked, is the eardrum located within the skull uh, or the outer part of the ear canal? And also, what is the ridge that you see when you look into a canal during a lot of our suction videos? So to answer that question, we've got our trusty ear model here. So what you'll see is that we have two sections to the ear canal. So we have the outer section here, so the section closest to the ear uh, is actually cartilaginous. So it's a cartilage around the outside part of this, uh, this part of the ear canal. But you'll also see that there is also a bony section, which is just here. So this is the skull. So the outer section is in cartilage, the innermost section is in skull. So this is the eardrum here. So you can see that the eardrum is actually located within your skull. The ridge that you see is where these two pieces meet. So you tend to get a little bump or a narrowing in that section of the ear canal there. So I hope that answers your question for you, Beth. Uh, the next question. Let's grab my next question, is from uh, Grace Rules. Grace wants to know, do uh, Caucasian people produce more earwax? The answer to that question is no, they don't. Uh, earwax consistency can vary. So for instance, in um, Asian people, you tend to find that you get a more drier, flakier earwax or more kind of solid pieces coming away. Um, but with Caucasian people, it tends to be usually a little bit more softer, although you can get dry earwax as well. So it's not necessarily that um, certain people produce uh, more earwax than others. It's more to do with just the consistency of the wax, basically. So that's the answer to that one. The next question is from Nia Just Nia. Uh, they had a question about uh, fungal ear infections. They wanted to know, you know, what is the usual cause of it and what implications do you have if you have a fungal ear infection? Um, a fungal ear infection is an ear infection of the outer part of the ear canal due to a fungus. Uh, so it's called otomycosis. And the most common type of problem as far as otomycosis is concerned is a reduction in hearing. You can get some uh, discomfort in the ear canal as well, especially if it's quite a, quite a, uh, a, a well-established ear infection there. They're notoriously difficult to treat because there can be lots of different causes of it. So the most common cause is aspergillus, uh, although you can get some candida in there as well. It's usually treated with antifungal treatment and that will clear it up. As far as why someone would get that rather than a normal ear infection, sometimes people have a propensity to um, fungal infections. Sometimes if your uh, immune system is a little bit low, you're going to be a little bit more susceptible to it, uh, especially with things like diabetes mellitus and things like that as well. So there are lots of different reasons why, uh, why you can get it in there. It can normally be treated with antifungals. It may take a little bit longer than your standard ear infection to clear up, but it will normally clear up. The next question comes from Terry Light. Terry wants to know, how long is the average length of time in between patients' visits to us, you know, as far as their wax buildup is concerned? And what are the other duties that we have as audiologists? So the average length of time for our patients, uh, if there are no other complications, if it's purely just a wax issue, it's usually roughly about 12 months, maybe 18 months at a push. Um, as far as our duties as audiologists, we cover anything ear related. So that would be hearing testing. We provide hearing aids. Uh, we do general hear health checks, wax removal. So there's lots of different things, your tinnitus therapy in some cases. So there are lots of different duties as an audiologist. It's a great profession to get into and I thoroughly enjoy it. So um, if anyone's thinking about being an audiologist, it's definitely one to get into. It's a great, great career to do. Um, we come to the end of our video today. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody who's uh, subscribed to the channel, has also been sharing our our content as well. We, well, just checking this morning, we've got 97,000 subscribers. So we're so close to the 100,000 subscriber mark. So as a thank you, when we get to 100,000 subscribers, I do have a very special video for you to go on. Uh, we'll do that as a premiere. So if you don't mind sharing, liking, subscribing, that would be absolutely fantastic. And as always, guys, Guys, thanks so much and take care.